Okay, today we're going to do some quick shooting because I am busy as all heck, but I still want to get one of these out. So um, because it was the next thing I was messing around with, um, I want to do a little bit of hackery with and coverage of my Quadra 700. Now I have many Macs in my collection. Let's turn it the proper way. There we go. Um, but this one I really like because, firstly, as part of this video we'll get involved with, this is my AUX machine. Um, also, the Quadra 700 is just cool because it's, you know, the Jurassic Park machine, which is fun. Um, it's just a nice looking machine. I have a couple 2CIs and a couple 2CXs, and it's basically the same thing, but, you know, you've got the fun sideways logo, and you've got these uh, vent holes on the front, and... Uh, it's just got a little more panache to it that I think I really enjoy. So uh, let me pull this open and I'll just show you the guts for fun. And then I'll get into a small project I want to do. Not much to see on the back of this thing, but I will cover it anyway just for fun. It has built-in video that I don't know the specs of, uh, SCSI. It has the AAUI Ethernet port there that um, I don't feel like buying an adapter for. Um, your regular serial ports, two of them printer and uh, modem, two ADB ports, audio in and out, and that's it. You get two new bus slots here, which is nice, and I do have, you can't see because the light, but a couple cards in there that I'll pop this open and we will see what those are, but I can also just tell you what they are. Um, this one is a, it's just an ethernet card that was a pain in the butt to find drivers for, but I did it! Um, at least drivers for AUX. Um, and this second one, I believe, we'll have to take a look in there, but I think that may be my orange PC emulation card. But I could be wrong. Let's find out. Very nicely, uh, as with the 2CI and 2CX series, and pretty much all the Macs of this period, there's just a couple tabs that you pop on the top, and then this lid just comes right off. So you can see here is the Cabletron Ethernet card. I didn't have access to a lot of new bus machines when I was first getting into old Macs and stuff, and... Uh, I don't know, they just strike me as really valuable feeling. They've got all of them this great, you know, mid-80s uh, surface mount, very expensive feel to them. You know, they've got these chonky, chonky uh, Euro connectors on them. So this card, I can't even remember how I found the drivers online, particularly for AUX, but uh, AUX has a completely different driver system for network cards uh, to work in Unix land than um, Mac does, so... That was fun, and I can't even recant the details of that. And yeah, so I was right. Let's be careful about this, because this is probably worth something. This orange PC card is really cool. Um, it was just inside one of the computers I got, whoop, a little dust, in a lot that I picked up um, in New Jersey one time, only time I've ever really done anything like that. And that's a whole adventure I could get into, um, taking a U-Haul from Queens through Manhattan, to New Jersey to pick up a, a giant lot of Macs. Uh, that one was fun. But this card is really dope. Um, I'll probably try and do something more particular on this one at some point, because this is a 486 PC on a card. I actually managed to find the software for this online as well, so I got this fully working with DOS and uh, Windows for work groups. Um, really cool card and uh, worth some money too, but I would never give it up because it is too fun. According to the venerable every Mac, this has a 25 megahertz. Oh God! A 25 megahertz 68040. That may be correct or incorrect or different from my machine. I don't know because I mostly just collect these for fun, and they're all old and functionally terrible anyway. So, like, I don't really care about specs all that much. Um, I believe I have eight megs of RAM in this thing. Um, I think it takes up to 64. Again, not that I'm really counting. Um, a decent amount of RAM is good for AUX because, you know, you've got a lot of processes in memory at the same time trying to share stuff. Um, but you got a regular SCSI hard drive here. This is, uh, I want to say that's like a 120 meg or something. Not, not very big. And then under here is your standard uh, Super Disk floppy. And that's fundamentally it for this. I mean, you know, it's a Mac. It's a Mac 2 type. It's a 68,000... Um, machine, which is fun. Um, I kind of like having a little bit of both, and I kind of like developing for the old 68,000 machines a little bit more. Couldn't tell you why, just a personal preference. 
But so those are a few of the reasons that I love this machine. And really the biggest one is besides it looking cool and being a notable machine um, that it runs AUX very well. One problem is you may notice that this does not have a CD-ROM drive on it and AUX you need a CD drive to install. Um, it starts by booting off a floppy and then looks for a SCSI CD drive with the AUX install files on it and installs everything to the hard drive from there. And I'm not going to go through an AUX install right now because it's on here and I don't feel like redoing it, especially considering that I'd have to redo the whole driver deal for this guy and I think I still have those around but um, don't feel like faffing with that. So sadly today you won't get to see that, but um, to do something like that, you will need something like this ridiculous setup. I guess if I have a point here, it's that, um, you know, make, make do with what you got because you can make this work. I don't have many external SCSI peripherals, but I do have, it's a CD-ROM drive from an old and busted Mac, pretty much guaranteed to work with Apple products because it's an Apple drive. I mean, manufactured by whatever third party, but it is, you know, Apple known hardware. I mean, you could just get yourself an enclosure or spend the extra money on a proper external SCSI CD-ROM, but all you really need is one of these cables that goes from the Centronics type SCSI connector used to connect uh, most very old SCSI devices externally. And the 25 pin that is pretty common for like SCSI 1 stuff and is on every Mac. And then I have that fed into this, which I'm lucky to have and I don't even remember where I had it. Again, you can just find this stuff online, but um, finding it for a, a good price can be a little bit tricky since this stuff is getting rarer and rarer. But this is just a, uh, what is that, 50 pin SCSI um, to the Centronics port. Normally this kind of thing would be inside uh, an enclosure, but so that can just attach to the 50 pin back there and you set your drive ID. Um, you just want to make sure that doesn't match your internal drive. Odds of you having a collision there are pretty low. Just make sure you set the ID jumpers right. And then finally for power, that's this jankiness. This is the power supply that I use for everything. Um, and it's just a, an ATX power supply with a bajillion cut up leads for different things. Um, you just use the Molex connector for that. And that's all I used to install AUX, and I just burned the CD and booted a floppy, and it worked a treat. So that's that's all you're going to know about my AUX installation process. But um, you can do it. <laughs> just scrap things together. You can make it work. All right. So with that said, uh, now that we've had a quick rundown of the Quadra, um, I'm going to reassemble it, and we will boot into AUX. And I'll, I'll show you the boot up and give you a quick mini tour. And then I'll show you what the small project for today is. I seem to have gotten the camera a little bit better at reducing the flicker. Um, but it's a hack and I still have a new camera. So, AUX, like most other... Uh, alternative 68,000 operating systems for the Mac. Um, it starts up from within Mac OS. So when Mac OS 7 starts up, this is pretty much just a bog standard Mac OS 7 install. Um, it starts this launcher program that then launches the AUX kernel and then AUX takes over the machine, uh, much like the Linux launchers. You can stop it and you can just run system seven. As you can see, if we go to about this Macintosh, I love that little Quadra 700 logo. But this is System Software 7.1 um, that's running off this untitled disk. You'll see that's the only disk that shows up. It's because the other partition that's on here is a Unix partition. And as such, uh, Mac OS cannot read it. Hey, it looks like I have 20 megs. So maybe I have 16 megs of sticks in there. That seems right, because I think this has four on board. Anyhow, so AUX puts this application and this script in the uh, root folder of your Mac OS drive. And that's what runs on launch. And now we're in AUX, which you'll note if I go to about this Macintosh now, this suddenly says 
that it's running system software 701. Um, I'm not sure how far you can upgrade the system software, but that is system software that's internal to AUX. So this whole UI, the whole macOS environment, in fact, is a version of macOS that's running inside of a Unix process inside AUX. Okay, you missed a part where I did a bunch of futzing around trying to remember how things work, but I've remembered a couple things that I can at least demo. Um, so firstly, you have this command shell app, and this is the first indication that you might be in Unix land. So it starts up and you don't see much, it doesn't create a terminal by default. And so I guess really this is the granddaddy of the terminal in OS X. And you can do all your, you know, Unixy things. It's just a Unix terminal. And of course that slash drive is your Unix root. So that's what you're seeing in here. And uh you know, you can run Vi, VI, whatever you want to call it. But the cooler thing that I really enjoy about AUX, or at least think it's one of the cooler tools that comes with it, is if you go into the root in this Mac directory, there's this Mac X folder, and it kind of does what it says on the box. It's the granddaddy, if we're going to talk about granddaddies, of exports. I don't know if there's any actual lineage, but it's an X client that runs on classic Mac OS. So one of the cool things about this, and I can't demo this today, but I did post a picture to Reddit at one point, is that I can connect to a deck windows session on my VAX on my Quadra 700. So uh, as if you aren't getting retro enough. But if you fire up Mac X, it's a pretty old school X server. Um, really no protection to speak of, which makes it kind of useful for setting up that um, deck windows system. Because trying to set that up with a modern X server that has modern authentication requirements is a huge headache. So if we do show color root window, it will display a window that shows that root. So of course the main hook here is that you can run X executables, and we can do it right from here. Let's say we want to start up TEWM. Now again to note, the screen you choose, so this dot whatever, in this case I'm choosing dot zero, will determine which of the windows it's going to show up in, whether it's going to be that color root, the black and white root, or if it'll show up in the rootless window. You can figure out which is which in the configuration settings, but it's easier just to stick with zero, and in this case I set that color rooted window to zero, just so that it would be easy for me. Um, and I'm going to run TWM. If we go over here, if I did things right, yeah, there you go. There's the TWM menu. And now if we go back over to the command shell again, let's run something like, let's just do an X size. Forgot to set the display on that one, which is weird because it doesn't just error out with couldn't find display. It just doesn't do anything. I don't really understand. But let's set that display. And there we go with our nice little TWM window Chrome on there as well. And, you know, considering it's an old machine, it, it doesn't run too terribly. Considering this is a remote windowing protocol going over the network stack, it's uh, it's pretty good performance, but it's a neat trick. Something you can do in OS X that you could actually also do in AUX in the 80s. Okay, so to close out this video, uh, I wanted to do a little mini project. Uh, it's not a big one, but Basically, as I rebuild my office here, I'm wanting to kind of use my terminal to access all my machines that have terminal access. And life would be really easy if I had like a nice little serial terminal server or something, which those are pretty cool. They can be kind of a rack mount setup usually, and they will have a ton of usually RJ style ports on one side that you have to build or buy an adapter for to uh, DB9 or DB25 or your Cisco RJ type connection or whatever you need um, to connect your device to serial. Now on the other end, you'll usually have like an ethernet connection that you can plug into your network, you configure the thing, and then you can tell that to that device and then select a port to run a serial session on over the network. Um, would be super useful. And uh, if I could use that as an intermediary between the serial terminal server and all of my serial devices, that would be nice, but I just haven't been able to pull the trigger on buying one. So I have to make do with what I have. Usually what I like to do is have the VAX plugged into my gateway machine, which kind of bridges my home and retro networks. 
And that way, that one for sure, I can always power it up and directly get a console from any of my machines that I can tell that to or SSH to or whatnot. Only problem is that machine only has one serial port on it. So I have to figure out uh, some other way of connecting the terminal to things, especially if I want to connect the terminal to the VAX. So the thought is I'm going to connect the terminal to the Quadra, and the Quadra has two serial ports on it, so if I wanted to connect another device up to the other serial port, that is something I could do and something I've done in the past. But also, since the Quadra has a network interface, um, if I set up internal Telnet on all the machines in the retro network, then I should be able to use the terminal to control all of them, which would be pretty neat. So the mini project today is just to get the terminal talking to the Quadra, which shouldn't be too hard, but will require a couple of things. Ultimately, what you're going to want to do is convert a Mac DB9 serial crossed over, no modems, and that's ultimately going to need to go to a DEC RJ type connector, one of these weird guys. In my case, I built two cables. One is just a general purpose Mac to DB9, and it's a null modem. So that's just a useful cable to have around because it lets me interconnect PCs and Macs for transferring data. Um, it'll also work on Mac 2Cs, I believe they have the same serial connection. The other one, I chopped up one of the deck serial cables so that I could make just a straight through connector changer type thing that takes one of the deck RJ style plugs on any kind of equipment and turns it into a DB9. So you've got your special fancy cabling. Uh, what are you supposed to do now in order to get the actual software working? So the nice thing is AUX documentation is actually pretty useful and in the AUX administrator's guide it has a section specifically on setting up serial terminals. You need to edit the init tab. So I'm going to run vi etc init tab. And there's a lot of pre-configured options on here. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom, there are these couple entries. One is CO respawn etc login RC. So the nice thing is this is nice and well commented. So that CO entry, the next two indicate where to run giddies, which of course is the command that will actually spawn a login on the serial port. Now these are set to off by default. What you want to do is exactly what the comments say, which is set to respawn, which means that whenever a logout happens, it respawns the Getty and the login terminal on that serial port. Of course, in Unix land, we use the TTY devices, which do not line up well to the Mac serial port names because in Mac land, you've got the modem port and the printer port. And without really looking in some place like this, it's pretty non-obvious which one is TTY0 and which one is TTY1. But thankfully, it tells you in here. This comment says, port 0, modem. The next one says, port 1, print. So in my case, I'm going to use the modem port. So literally all I need to do is correct off to respawn. So I'm going to write out this init tab file. And then we do init q. And that rereads the init tab file. And now we can plug in our hardware, now that we know which one we're actually spawning the terminal on, and see what we get. All right, moment of truth time. Well, I screwed something up. All I had to do was switch to the printer port. I don't know why. Maybe my modem port is dead somehow? That doesn't seem great. Maybe I fried it a long time ago or something. But look! Apple Computer Incorporated. AUX. I'm going to log on this root because that's all I got. Look at that beautiful banner. Uh, it asks us for what terminal we're running. If I do VT420... I don't know if the 420 is newer than AUX. It's probably something that's worth looking up. But if I do that, it says 420 is unknown. So I don't know if I could use a slightly older but still more modern terminal. But look at that. I'm in AUX. So the next step for setting up my office, which I may put into videos if I really can't think of any other content, but probably not is to get a lot of those other machines hooked up to my retro network and then make sure I can remote into all of them 
all through the Quadra running AUX. Then I can use my terminal to control basically any of my computers that support terminals. So I don't know if that's worth showing, but either way, I hope you had some fun watching me set up this terminal with this computer. Um, I think it's real interesting to run a terminal off a Mac. That's not... Hell, text mode is a very non-80s Mac thing, so to have a terminal running a Unix on a Mac is just... It does wonderful things for me. But thanks for coming along for the ride for another week running. And uh, yeah, tune in next time.